What's up, hotties? Welcome back to another episode of Stay Hot. I'm Bladen Kirk, joined as always by my two favorite co-hosts of all time and Matthew Spinauer and Theo Ash. We have a great episode planned for you all today as we recap the Super Bowl, and that will kind of put a bow on what has been a fantastic season. Theo, I know you're doing great because you're the you're the only one that had stake in this game. And things worked out quite well for you. Matt, I'm not so sure because you had to be among the Cincinnati commoners. Um, I wanted them to win. I was <laughs> I was rooting for them very hard. I was really upset they lost. It sucks. It's it's look, I I, I made a video saying that the Bengals didn't lose because of the refs, but man, it, that it was, was a tough holding. It call. was really brutal. And as someone who wanted the Rams to win, like point blank period. I hate that the game came down. One thing I, people accuse me of being a Bengals hater. I don't hate the Bengals, although I didn't want to be an absolute laughing stock all off season. I am a hater of soft (laughs) defensive penalties, but it is hard for me to feel too bad when like the only offense they had the entire second half was a missed face mask on T Higgins and he threw Ramsey out the club and it was Ramsey was really in good position to intercept that ball. I mean, that was underthrown by bro. Yeah. And Ramsey was in front of, in front of Higgins. And then he wasn't all of a sudden in front of Higgins because Higgins threw him out of the way. So like, (laughs) you know, it's tough for me to be like, Oh, refs handed, you know, LA that game when they pretty much gave Cincy a touchdown that should have been probably a, you know, 10, 15 yard penalty. So, but yes, it was it was, well, before, was totally brilliant. yeah. But before we get into the rest of the game, just a reminder to everyone to subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, it's Valentine's Day, and it would be you showing us love <laughs> if on Valentine's Day you subscribed to the YouTube channel. I think that's only fair, right? Um, if you subscribe, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> you heard Not it here first. If you, be over dramatic. But. What what if I what if I subscribe, Matt? Like we, like we always say, we need this. I need yeah, this. Yeah, Matt really needs a win this morning this. after his hometown Bengals <laughs> lost. I'm, he needs a win. He needs a val- he <laughs> needs After Cincinnati my Cincinnati Bengals after lost. After his Cincinnati Bengals after lost. Ca- after Cam Newton 2.0 loss. He has no Valentine. Uh-huh. He needs a little bit of love this morning. <laughs> hey, you don't know that. <laughs> my mom and my grandma both sent me very nice. My, gra- my so, grandma um, sent me a happy Valentine's Day text this morning. My, too. my grandma also sent me a very w. happy Valentine's Day text. <laughs> w. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, the Super Bowl was a, a, a fantastic game. And I thought, you know, Theo, you said they would. The Rams would win fifty to nothing. That didn't quite happen, but it could have. Um, there, there were there was a point where I was like, "Damn, maybe." Well, maybe <laughs> everything went perfect. I mean, the the Rams were the better team in this game. I mean, they didn't have one successful running play like the whole day until like there was like one first no. down towards the end. But they didn't have one play that probably went over like six yards on the ground. There was Stafford had the longest run of seven. Well, yeah, that's not. That's not everything going the Bengals' way. That's the Bengals playing that, fantastic true, true. defense. They they that's the best run defense I've maybe <laughs> right, ever yes. seen. Okay, it okay. was bizarre. It's like they couldn't. Logan run Logan Wilson. If if the Bengals won this game, if they ended up winning this game, my MVP vote may have gone to Logan Wilson, their linebacker. Assuming, especially if that if that field. phantom holding call didn't get called and he locked that down, I I truly think he may have been the best yes. player out there and and the reason that they won that game because the Rams got nothing going on the ground. They lost the turnover battle two to zero, including one that was kind of tipped up in the air. There was the big play by T Higgins that maybe shouldn't have happened. And Odell got hurt. uh, And like it would, and the Rams still won the game. So for the Bengals to win, they needed a lot of breaks and they would need like one unit would have to play absolutely out of their mind, like generational game. And it happened and they still lost. So I don't know. I thought the talent gap between the the Rams and the especially in the second half with the pass rush got got pretty brutal there. But obviously it wasn't. Yeah, I mean, if there was definitely a least valuable player of that game, it was number seventy seven for the Cincinnati Bengals. <laughs> yeah, they're right side of the <laughs> that, offensive that line. Dude, I didn't. Maybe this makes me a casual. I legitimately did not know that Isaiah Prince was starting in the Super Bowl. <laughs> he was. <laughs> Not strong for Ohio State, I remember specifically. Um, so they got to retool the offensive line and whatever. Um, 
it's just the, I mean, the, the, like the gap and the offensive line. This is why I picked against yeah. them. You just can't not picking against that pass rush. Yep. And they got to be aggressive doing it, I think. And it's it can't just be like, oh, we'll take a guy in the, the first two rounds of the draft. Like, man, you can't just sit on your sit on your hands here if you're the Bengals. Like, it's hard yeah. to get back to this place. And it is hard to just, oh, just retool your offensive line. Good offensive linemen are very hard to find, and they need about three or four of them. So, like, yeah, they need to like if they if Laramie Tunsil is available for a trade, if if you know whoever you can find, I guess I don't know off the top of my head offensive lineman contracts I think, that are expiring. I think there's look if they could just get some serviceable guys, um, and there's there I think there's is actually a pretty good offensive line class, and I think it's a pretty good it offensive is. line free agency class. So, and they have money. There's nothing stopping the Bengals from having a good offensive line next year but you also have to keep in mind that they're a team where like the only thing we should draft is offensive line and there's like seven other teams thinking yeah. that every yeah. team thinks they have a bad offensive line everyone wants offensive linemen um but again th- this is a very good year to need it's a good year line, at the top so. of the class i know i mean it concerned me a little bit through the senior bowl uh because the offensive line were, was kind of getting their ass kicked <laughs> for a lot of it <laughs> so maybe like kind of more into the later but like especially towards the top like um, the three tackles and and Linderbaum, I, I think is all really good. Um, I don't know. I don't. I guess I don't know that much beyond it. But I thought the defensive line was better than the offensive line at the Senior Bowl. But that's also not the entire pool of talent. So I guess I don't know what I'm talking about <laughs> that, much, that much. Theo Ash. Theo Theo Ash Casual. Theo Ash Casual. So. Theo Ash Casual. Theo Ash. Um, a lot of people I saw thought Aaron Donald should win MVP. And I, I had nah. to disagree. I he had didn't to, score I any thought. touchdowns. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take Cooper Cup all day. Cooper, Cooper Cup deserves his respect, dude. Literally, any uh, there are at least 50, 60, 70 other receivers who would be called the best receiver in the league. If he had the best receiver season of all time. Yeah. And if I call yeah. him top three, people will disagree. The player in the, what are we talking about? the player about? of the year, triple crown, Super Bowl MVP. You you cannot do much better than that. Caught the game winning touchdown. Like what? What more yeah, does he got caught, caught the first? Uh, no, the uh, second touchdown of the game yeah, as well. A, yeah, he had he had like literally every clutch play on that last drive was to Cooper Cup. Eight of their they had fifteen plays in that drive. Eight of them were to Cooper Cup. Um, and you know those there were three plays they targeted him in the end zone. And one, one of them was an touchdown. amazing catch. Yeah. Amazing catch. That one that got called back because he got yeah. speared in the head, yeah. but there was also the hole. I mean, I cannot believe he he held onto the ball, got rocked in the head, and I was like, oh my God, is he concussed? Is he going to be able to like... And then, and, then he, and then he got another one to win it. Yeah, and it was on Eli Apple, but Eli Apple was not playing like even bad coverage there. Like that was just perfectly executed by, by Cup. And, That's what just, I'm saying, yeah. dude. I mean, he... He had like six, seven touchdowns this playoff run. He's been, he's stepped up when he needed to step up. He's been yeah. phenomenal. I think if you call him the best receiver in the NFL, you're not. Far I don't off think base. you're far off base either, really, right now. And you know that, that's a little bit of a that's a little bit of a like, character I'm, I'm, growth moment for me. But yeah, no, he's his. He yeah, just, I was about to say. I, I know Theo, you used to be a <laughs> may anti have, cup, may but st- I wasn't necessarily like totally anti cup. Like I guess I was a little bit anti cup, but I mean, I just couldn't believe like. Cooper Cup of all people came out of nowhere and was having this type of historical season. Yeah. And when it was happening on like well, linebackers I, I mean, on safeties, I was like, okay, is this totally Mickey Mouse? But I was off base there and I was I was being a little reactionary. I mean, it's just like he had his playoff stats were 625 yards, seven touchdowns, a 70% catch percentage, and almost 10 yards a target. Yeah. Against the best you know, against the best teams to and Super Bowl MVP. It's like, yeah, he deserves any respect. One of the better receiver playoff runs we've seen since maybe Fitzgerald, Larry Fitzgerald comes to mind during that Cardinals Super Bowl run that ended in a loss for them, but he was out of his mind in that playoff run as well. Edelman's uh, Super Bowl, Edelman's Super Bowl MVP was another really good performance by a receiver, but it wasn't nearly to the same extent. It may have been to the same extent, but I don't know if he had the playoff run, I guess, like, but in that game, it was probably to the same. Yeah. And it was what was incredible about it is once Odell got hurt, I mean, there was just the, the Rams offense just had nothing because the, the run, every single run was going yeah. nowhere. Skoranek sucks, dude. He's horrible. 
<laughs> Van Jefferson is, is that how you say his name? Skoranek? Yeah, it's, oh. it's Van Jefferson was not doing Bro. much. Um, you know, he wasn't quite stepping up and, and winning consistently like you'd like to see. And the offense just ground to a halt. And, and the only thing that could have happened is force feeding cup because they're going to double team him and make someone else win. And Odell was on pace for a big game, in my opinion. Like Odell could have had a massive yeah. game with them, you know, putting a ton of attention on cup. And then like leaving Odell one on one and he had 52 yards in like the first quarter or at the at least the beginning of the second quarter on off of man coverage, like one on one. So but like once he went down, there was just nowhere else to go but cup and they tried to get other things going and not force feed cup, but it just wasn't working. And then at the end, they said, you know, fuck it. (laughs) We're going to force feed cup. I don't care. No, And it and it it felt like whenever. When when the Bengals went single high, it was like, oh, we're going to Odell. We got Odell one on one. We're taking that shot every single time. Yep, the big crossing route um, as well. And then was the same went, deal. yeah, and and then once Odell went down, I felt like the ba- the Bengals just felt like they could go single high fearlessly, and Van Jefferson was not able to capitalize on those same plays. Yeah, um, and not to criticize your your fantasy <laughs> football player, Matt. Um, <laughs> they were relying so heavily on like wheel routes to Daryl Henderson. They tried like three or four of those up the seam and Stafford actually <laughs> yeah. hit two of them. And especially the first one was an amazing throw by Stafford. So like, but like any time where like a big part of your offense is like Daryl Henderson, like 15 to 20 yards down the field, <laughs> it's, it's getting a little bit dicey. You know, it was really, really yeah. dicey. Yeah. Sean McVay was deep into his he bag was, of tricks. He was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and no, it, but Stafford made a lot of really good throws. I know you got the you had the one posted on Sports Center, Theo. Um, but he just made so many, so many throws where it's like, oh my God. He's just he's just that guy. Yeah, the no look to to basically and not quite win the Super Bowl, but to get him into position to win the Super Bowl is about as nails as it gets, like I said. And the picks weren't totally his fault because one was on third and long and one was kind of tipped up into the air. Stafford played the Skoranek, the, the Skoranek one. He just fell down. Skoranek is ass. Yeah, no, that wasn't totally. <laughs> Bro, <Stafford>. that, du- <laughs> that dude is. Listen, there are two players that will be working at the same McDonald's next year. And it is number 77 for the Cincinnati Bengals, and number 18 for the for the Rams. Those guys can't play. On the defensive side of the ball, I think um, one of the keys to the game that, that I was noticing, um, at least for the Rams, was, I mean, we had Seth Galina on uh, the other day, and he was talking about, you know, going 5-1, and and that creates one-on-one matchups across the board for the Rams defensive line, right? Because you got five, but then there's only kind of one linebacker out there, and it opens up the middle of the field. And the guy he mentioned was, like, you got Troy Reader playing that role, right? And he's not a great linebacker. But I thought... Um, they played Ernest Jones, the rookie, in that spot mm-hmm. for a lot of the game. And I thought Ernest Jones out of South Carolina, Matt, I don't know if you knew anything about him, hey. a, out of South Carolina. He played yeah. a really nice game, and he's been making plays for the Rams when I've watched them over the kind of the entire second half of the season. And I thought that he w- was a really underrated part. He had that fourth and one pass breakup early on that that first fourth down in the first quarter. Um, he had a sack. He had some other nice tackles. Um, I thought he playing that spot instead of Troy Reader, and Troy Reader played a, a decent amount. Um, and they did go four two, maybe a little bit more than they have in the past, but they didn't completely switch to that. Um, but I thought Ernest Jones was kind of an underrated part of the Rams winning this game as well. Yeah, I um, I, I do wonder what happens to the Rams now. Yeah. There are uh, rumors Half that their teams retiring. Uh, every single one of their players will re- yeah, <laughs> they're all gone. Um, <laughs> and they don't have a draft pick till 2030. So what? they don't have a single it's, draft pick. It's tough to <laughs> <laughs> they have none. Um, it's I would I don't know their cap situation off the top of my head and how many guys they need to bring back, but I feel like even if you can just bring back most of the guys, I feel like most people there are going to be willing to run it back. It's yeah, yeah. I, I get it. I get it. Like football is a taxing sport. And like, if you're Sean yeah. McVay and you can make more money and spend more time with like 
Because, you know, you, you've got to like talk with your wife and be like, OK, I'm going to be incredibly busy and leave you to raise this kid is is a tough pill to swallow for like <laughs> yeah, a family yeah, that yeah, is yeah, like yeah. No, trying right. to get started. Um, so if you can get like more downtime, more time to build that family, maybe a higher play, paying job that is less work. It's te- it's a tempting offer. So like I've maybe 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 it does. Maybe it does fall apart here a little bit because. Von Miller's a free agent. Odell. Yeah. Um, Odell's a free agent. Odell's a free and agent. And just tore his ACL potentially. You can, probably, you can probably stomach losing Odell um, just for the sake of like you get Robert Woods back, you have Van Jefferson. That's still a very good receiving core. It's still one of the better receiving cores. Yeah. Um, but it, it's like if you lose Whitworth – and you lose Odell and you lose Von Miller. It doesn't need to be like, that's it for the whole team. But if now the team maybe is just bad enough. So where someone else decides like, you know what, man, I'm done too. I don't think we're going to be as strong. And then now the team's a little bit worse. And then someone else is like, yeah, you know what? And then all of a sudden Sean McVay doesn't want to play or doesn't want to coach anymore. And it could all fall yeah, apart. Yeah. I mean, I know Aaron Donald has teased the idea of retirement a little bit. Um, so that would that would be a huge blow to lose, you know. To some people, you know, consider him now the greatest defensive player ever. I don't know if I'm I'll quite give him that title over LT. Um, but no, the Rams are definitely in a tough spot. And if they lose McVay, they lose Donald, they lose all these guys. Then you have to wonder: Is Stafford going to go play for the Browns next year? <laughs> God damn it. Um, <laughs> I would feel bad for Stafford if like he finally gets traded to a functional organization and then they all just like retire and he's just kind of left there. But he's got cup. Well, he he got his Super Bowl. Yeah, he got uh, he got what he wanted. Now they're probably in a position where they could open up a ton of money. Um I'm willing to guess through restructuring. And retirements. And you know, the problem with restructuring is is you know, it's it's aggressive. Um but there is no reason why the Rams shouldn't be very aggressive. And hey, they have the. There's four teams that have more cap space than, or not last. Um, so I could, I, I mean, you could restructure. Yeah, we, we know who's Rams last, and, Matt. We know who's last. Leonard Floyd. No, we do know who's last. I, maybe, maybe they do keep Von. Maybe it's not a given they lose Von Miller. You know, um, and in that case, it could, yeah, it could swing a lot of ways, and there's a lot of uncertainty. I would say. That it's a pretty safe bet, though, that this is not the Super Bowl we see next year. <laughs> you know, this is not like Chiefs Buccaneers yeah. where everyone is like, man, I could really see that being a repeat like next year's Super Bowl. I'm not right. I'm not sure I see either the Rams or the the Bengals here next year. Um, so, yeah, that that's always that's not a hot take. That's not a because teams hardly ever go mm-hmm. to back to back Super Bowls, much to less the same teams or. So obviously that's that's not a hot take, but especially with these two teams, it kind of seems like this they're not really built to be, be, or yeah, they're not really built to be you know dominant decade long dynasties like maybe the Chiefs or or the Patriots or you yeah. know seems like that. And like maybe the Bang- maybe the Bengals have a pretty bright future, but um, they they sure could use some help, which brings us into our first ad read. By our new sponsor, BetterHelp. Is there something interfering with your happiness or is preventing you from achieving your goals? Uh, you know, BetterHelp assesses your needs and will match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. You know, it's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's not professional. It is professional therapy done securely and online. You know, there's a broad range of expertise available, which, you know, may not be locally available in in many areas. And it's available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime, send a message directly to your therapist. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. You won't ever have to just like sit in an uncomfortable room and, you know, like a waiting room like you may have in the past or like necessarily always have to sit on your phone and like text someone. Um, you know, BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and, you know, free to change therapists if needed. 
It's more affordable than traditional offline therapy and financial aid is available as well. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. So go ahead, visit their website, read their testimonials that are posted daily like this one. where They say, I feel less stressed, anxious, and depressed. It's really a great option for anyone looking for affordable help. Visit betterhelp.com slash stay hot. That's better H-E-L-P and join over 2 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they're recruiting additional therapists in all 50 states. Special offer for the Stay Hot listeners, you can get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash stay hot. Better for your life today. And, you know, we had some, we had some interesting bets that we were, tr- that we were looking to place. Um, I know Theo's a big betting man himself. Were there any big overs or unders that you were looking for, Theo? Well, we talked to Seth last week and we were, we were kind of predicting a big T Higgins game. Uh, so that's one yeah. that I was looking at for sure. I was looking at a Odell over, and but sure. he got hurt. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was liking the Odell over too, but I was really liking the T Higgins over. That was, that was my personal favorite, especially after I saw the video of like his mom talking about how she always wanted to go to the Super Bowl. I'm like, all right, now, now for the narrative's sake, we have to bet the T Higgins over. Um, well, now that we know his mom <laughs> wants him to do well, that's gotta be good. Listen, man, listen, man, you know, if you've ever had the support of like your mom, you know that like that means a lot. But now that's that the right. 21 season is officially over, there is no off season when it comes to underdog fantasy, right? So now you can draft a 2022 best ball fantasy football team in their big board tournament with $250,000 in cash prizes and 50000 to win first place. Which incoming rookies will you draft to make a splash on your 2022 fantasy team? Matt, I know you're a big, uh, you're a big dynasty guy. Are there uh, yeah. any any rookies you're looking at right now? Any uh, like incoming rookies? Yeah, for your for your dynasty well, league. Well, the key with uh, dynasty, you know, anyone <laughs> can find receivers. There's a hundred receivers, uh, but you want to be able to find yourself a running back. Now you could go get you know mm. Kenneth Walker and the, the, the the halls and whatnot. And there, there's a lot of good running backs who I like. Um, but if there was like more of like a sleeper guy who maybe won't go to the fourth or the fifth round, but I can see having a big impact on a team right now. Uh, Jerome Ford out of Cincinnati <laughs> I knew is definitely it. somebody I, knew I would it. be thinking about. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> it's Jerome too Ford. early to say for dynasty half of being a good fantasy running back. 90% of being a good fantasy running back is them giving you the ball. And yeah where you go determines how much they'll give you the ball a lot. Yeah. I felt the blunt of that when I drafted miles Gaskin and he didn't get the ball, <laughs> even though he is a good player, but you can draft your, your dream fantasy football roster in the, in the big board now. And that's it. No waivers, no trades, no having to set your lineup. Underdog will give you the optimal score each week and get this right now. When you sign up using the code, stay hot underdog is going to match your initial deposit with up to $100 in bonus cash. So what are you waiting for? Go check out underdogfantasy.com or their mobile app and sign up with the code STAYHOT and may the best drafter win. Um, It'll probably be me. You know, I'm pretty good Mm -hmm. at fantasy. You (laughs) lost. We're dead last. I know. (laughs) I I know. I was dead last. I was dead last in both of my fantasy leagues, not just the stay hot one. Ouch. Yeah. Did you go zero running back in both? Yep. (laughs) I'm telling you, dude, zero running back's a terrible strategy. I wanted to try it, okay? okay. I I get the idea. It's like you don't want to take the risk with the running back, but limiting yourself that hard, I'm not going to draft an entire position group at all immediately. (laughs) Is The more you limit yourself in the draft, the worse you'll probably draft. Yeah, probably. But it's okay. I'll be better next year. Um, but you know what else is great all the time? Stay Hot's newest sponsor, HelloFresh. Because Stay Hot is sponsored by America's number one meal kit. And even though I wasn't number one in fantasy, I could be number one in the kitchen. Because with HelloFresh, you get fresh, pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. HelloFresh lets you skip those trips to the grocery store and makes home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why I said, you know, it's America's number one meal kit for a reason. They cut out the stressful meal planning and grocery store trips. You can just enjoy cooking and get to eating in about 30 minutes or less. 
Also, HelloFresh is 30% cheaper than shopping at your local grocery store. And you get to skip all those you know, those terrible checkout lines. You can try the quick and easy meals, 15 to 20 minute dinners, breakfast on the go, 10 minute lunches in the HelloFresh market. Perfect for you if you have a crazy class schedule, an internship or a new job. You know, you can enjoy restaurant quality meals for less in the comfort of your own home with HelloFresh's gourmet recipes like balsamic fig sirloin. It's over 72% cheaper than an average restaurant meal. And I'll be honest, you know, I, uh, I haven't had HelloFresh in a minute and I'm craving it. So make sure you guys go to HelloFresh.com slash StayHot16 and uh, use code StayHot16. That's the number 16 and get up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Again, that's HelloFresh.com slash StayHot16. Use the code StayHot16 for America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh. Um, so now we can talk about how the Bengals can maybe be fresh in the coming years. Um, obviously, they need to get some offensive linemen. But they do; ha- they are in a good spot. This is a team that does have a lot of potential, I think, for the future. Well, usually when a Super Bowl team makes makes a Super Bowl, uh, it's because they've kind of spent, they've kind of gone all in, like the Rams, for example. And they're yeah, this is like the culmination of like the greatest they can be. With the Bengals, it's more like they're way ahead of schedule. They're like an insane, uh, you know, an insane level of ahead of schedule and that doesn't always mean that that team is going to stay like that in fact usually it doesn't um but it does mean that they're in a very good spot compared to most super bowl losers they have a ton of money they have all their draft picks um so i i I would think that they go invest crazy heavily in offensive line apple a uh, a couple more pieces of the defense and uh, run it back for the most part yeah i mean Super Bowl losers are in a tough spot because obviously you're like, what a great year. But losing the Super Bowl is oftentimes the peak of a team's run. All right. You look at the Super Bowl losers, you look at the or even Super Bowl winners, teams like the Eagles who are one offs, uh, the teams like the Falcons, teams like the 49ers, although they were pretty much back this year, but they did have a down year right after. Um, but I, I do think that if of all of those teams, the Bengals maybe remind me the most of the the Falcons from 2016. I think Burrow um, and and 2016 MVP Matt Ryan aren't all that totally different from each other. You've got Julio and the wide receiving core that was so good um, and and a defense that wasn't super high level or with a, a ton of big names. But you had Grady Jarrett there. You had Vic Beasley having a big season. You had, you know, Deion Jones and Keanu Neal uh, doing doing decent and and just like a, a solid unit and that wasn't like that was playing well, but wasn't maybe like an all time great defense. And I think that's kind of the type of Super Bowl losers. The Bengals are the problem. The difference is they're just a lot younger than those Falcons were like it is, it is kind of tough to remember a a Super Bowl team that had so many people like ages 25 and under and, and that basic whole offensive core is, is 25 and under. So I don't know if they'll be able to rehaul things in, in one off season, you know, with the with the with the injury luck they had this year, and and the how just how bad that offensive line is. But if you can get all these guys signed for a long time, you know, there's there's go, there is a long window that is that is open for them um, over the next decade. Yeah, yeah. I, I think another really big point for the Bengals is they had a lot of things go their way, right? And you know, not just in the Super Bowl. Right, because obviously, you know, you needed something to go your way to stay in that game. But throughout the season, the Browns being as injured as they were, the Ravens being the Ravens were so beat up. And for the Bengals to be as healthy as they were all year, you cannot always count on that. So I it, it, it that's the big thing for me, is it and I don't I'm not like gonna sit here and predict injury, but you could not sit here and be like, oh, they're going to be one hundred percent healthy all year. And the Browns and Ravens are both going to be a disaster. So, because those were the two favorites in the division. So that's that's where I'm I more worry about the Bengals is, do they get a lot of these breaks in the future? Probably not. Yeah, they'll need to be a better team than they are right. They'll need to build a better team than they have right now because this is, you know, from a, a talent perspective, 
maybe not the the greatest Super Bowl team we've ever seen. And yeah, they did get a lot yeah. of. Um, it was kind of their year, right? They they it was it was kind of their year. You know, super effective down the field all the time, um, which again isn't is a credit to them. It's not just like luck. Burrow has to be accurate, and 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 Chase yeah. has to catch all those things. So it's it's not just like. They oh they just were lucky because you know Burrow and Chase are amazing but yeah they all those guys were healthy and and Lamar got hurt and Baker was was horrible and the Browns in general couldn't mesh so yeah this is probably their best chance to win a Super Bowl um, but it's not like their their only chance I don't know I don't any, know yeah anytime you make the Super Bowl it's your yeah. best chance yeah to win the Super yeah Bowl. <laughs> just plain um, and simple <laughs> but I, I would say that. I, I, again, I would say that they have pretty good odds to run it back, um, and they should be excited. And if they can get an offensive line, it just changes the team so much. Like it, everything they did this year was just around offensively was around you know their offensive line being a disaster and Burrow getting sacked a lot. And if they can, I mean, that offense would be insanely strong with even an average offensive line. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so they're they're different than a lot of Super Bowl losers in that way, where there is like a glaring, like horrible hole in one of their position groups where you can see easy improvement. Like it, it is not hard to get better than where they are in the offensive line, and they're so young. So yeah, yeah, they they're not in a they're not in a horrible place. Like maybe some older like if the Rams were to have lost this game, they would be in a pretty horrible place. Yes, um, going forward, the Rams are are, are the Bengals are very different. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's something that you can kind of. It's not a it's not a lock, but it is it is better than maybe some Super Bowl losers are, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I don't know. And then there's also like the side of you still have to worry about the Chiefs in the AFC. Um, you so you're gonna have to worry about the Chargers. They're obviously gonna have to make some improvements defensively. They you know coming off a season where they had the worst run defense in the NFL. Um, we can only expect Herbert to get even better than he already is. A lot of people saw the Bills as being the best team in the NFL this year. Um, so there's just a lot. Where I mean, the Bills, the Bills had the best defense in the NFL, and it just like what that one game against the Chiefs, it didn't quite live up to it. Yeah, Ravens, and, it, and that's that's a young and that's a young team too. Ravens, Titans. It's there's a lot of there's a lot of good teams in the AFC that that I don't know if the Bengals are going to absolutely run that conference over the next couple of years. But again, th- their window is could be even bigger than just the next like two or three years. They've got one of the yes. biggest windows in football right now with how young their entire offensive core is. So yeah, as far as the Bengals like in the game, I've talked a lot about the Rams. I think I thought you know obviously the run defense deserves a lot of credit. Um, I thought they came out kind of in in nickel with with four two with Wilson and, and Pratt I think as the kind of the front seven main look that they were going in with Hilton Apple and and Awuzie out there so yeah to do that with with four guys to do that to have that kind of run defense with largely four guys in nickel um, was just absolutely incredible and I saw a stat that there have been like four games in in NFL recorded history where like there was not one successful running play like th- or as few successful running plays as the Rams had in that right. game there's only been like less than 5 games in recorded history with that kind of running stat line so reader and and um and Hendrickson had a sack early in the game and he was disruptive i honestly thought the first half Stafford was under just as much pressure as 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 Burrow was, and it was really getting to him, and and maybe even pre- yeah. prevented the lead from being. You know, it was at one point it was fourteen to three. I mean, if the if the pass rush wasn't doing what it was doing in in the very beginning of that game, it could have been even uglier than that. So, yeah, I thought that front seven deserved all the credit in the world. I thought Bates obviously had the pick, and overall. Um, he did miss a tackle early in the game that that allowed Cup to kind of pick up a big a big uh, chunk very very early in that game, but overall there really wasn't all that much down the field. Uh, the the front seven just played out of their mind, and overall the Bengals defense was super underrated all year because all the credit was going to Burrow in the offense and, and the Burrow and offense were very right. good. But uh, yeah, an underrated defensive performance perhaps from an underrated defense. So that's that's my thoughts yes. on the and Bengals that defense, defense. That defense has stepped up all playoffs 
Yeah. Right. That, that wasn't just this game. They had they that run defense came through against Derrick Henry. Even I know it was like his first game back, but still he had a they had a great game against him. The defense had a better you know, an injured Derrick better Henry's playoffs still. than the offense. That I guess may be my my hot take. Yes. Yeah. Three you wouldn't be wrong about that. <laughs> three picks versus the Titans while the offense allowed nine sacks. Um yeah. 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 No, I, I don't even think that's a question. Yeah. yeah. They absolutely the defense absolutely played better. Um I mean you the offense was bad against the Titans. Yeah. And honestly, the offense um, they held yeah. the, the offense wasn't that impressive this game. I don't think Burrow was all that great in this game either. Yeah, you take yeah. you take away you take away that T. Higgins offensive pass interference play, and the storyline around this game is completely different. Yeah. Yeah, no, Burrow, yeah. Burrow didn't, I mean, again, I don't, I can't, no one wants to hear me say it because they think it's always unfair when I say it, but yeah. Do you want me to say it, Theo? You, Do you want me to say it in your place? <laughs> it wasn't like a super impressive game I, from the offense in, in, it wasn't in this game, even in the Chiefs <laughs> game, the defense is what, what really let them come back, right? There was a lot of opportunities um, that the defense gave the offense and the offense did what they had to, but I was more impressed with the defense at that game, yes. the Titans game, and even in the Raiders game. I thought that the de- the offense wasn't exactly firing on all cylinders for the Bengals. So their defense is is now, underrated and I also will, something that has to, you know, get maintained. I will give Zach Taylor a, a, a smidgen of credit because they went for it twice on fourth down and one. The first time they went in this super tight formation. And the, when they did that against Tennessee, they usually got a ton of pressure and it usually ended in a sack or an incompletion of or of some sort. They did that on the first fourth down and one attempt. It ended up being incomplete, mm-hmm. right? Because they had a yeah. um, it was man coverage all the way. You guys saw the play, and the one linebacker got in the way of the throw to Jamar. The second time, they went five wide, spread the field, spread out the Rams defense. So there was only like five in the box, and then Burrow had an easy lane to run through for the first down. So I will give, I will give Zach Taylor some credit for making adjustments where he, where he saw fit. I thought Zach Taylor um, called the a, Rams defense work. I thought he played an okay game. Um, I thought he had a clever wheel route that Mixon was open on and on a third down at the beginning of the game. I don't know if you remember that, but Burrow got behind the defense and, and Burrow threw kind of a touch pass and overthrew Burrow. He missed him there. Um, but yes, that was overthrew Mixon. Yes. That was, I thought a clever play call early, early in the game. Um, the, the running drive all the way up the field, uh, mixing carried them to you know the goal line, and then that running back throw was just a perfect play call, perfect trick yeah. play to call at that point. Um, being aggressive, going it up for it on fourth downs in the appropriate situations. Um, I don't think that play calling was totally the issue in this game. It was the offensive line, and and Burrow did miss that that throw, I guess, but he didn't. Burrow couldn't have done that much behind that offensive line in the in the second half. I don't think Burrow had an impressive game by any means, but it wasn't like, oh my God, Burrow sold to me. Yeah, no, it wasn't a disaster yeah. class. But. Pretty simply, it was it was just the the offensive line that just allowed them to not do anything. Ever <laughs> since ever since Super Bowl Fifty, the offensive lines get the blame. Yeah, every this is two years in a row where it's like, oh. Well, the offensive line. But it's true. They didn't do that for my guy. They didn't do that for Cam. For Cam, it was like, yeah, go to hell. Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, no, that, that uh, ESPN's hyping up uh, Joe Burrow while he's wearing like the the whole like hat thing. Cam Newton's the big hat guy. He gets hate for it for years. I can't stand it. And it's not Joe Burrow's fault. Like that's the big thing. It's like a lot of people. A lot of people don't like Joe Burrow now because. It's just gotten so heavy handed. And like before the Super Bowl, if you just looked on Twitter, you wouldn't have known that Ma- uh, Matthew Stafford was playing in the game. They didn't talk about him at all. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, you got to keep in mind that it's not his fault that he's been getting all that hype, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Joe Burrow after this game. But he's Joe Burrow. Not- Joe Burrow after this game went. And was on stage with Kid Cudi, like cel- like partying. If Cam Newton, that TMZ reported that an hour if ago. Cam Newton. If Ca- it has eighteen quote tweets and forty four likes, no one cares. If Cam Newton lost the Super Bowl and immediately went out and hit the stage with Kid Cudi or some sort of rapper and was like singing along on stage, 
it would be on every ESPN like ticker and and no, segment. No, well, and, and it's it's not it's like Burrow is not like he doesn't have to just like be depressed for like a certain amount of time before he like moves on with his life. Like I'm not saying well, like for if, me even in the picture, Burrow looks <laughs> like he looks upset on stage. He's just like hands in his pockets, like well. D- Dude, I the thing about it is like even uh, I mean t- Cam was depressed after the game and that also wasn't right. right. Yeah, no. He also he was, wasn't he allowed was to do that. He was too grumpy at the press and conference. <laughs> he was too <laughs> upset, but if he had been happy, he's wrong for that. <laughs> and I I mean, do you guys remember when they I bring up Cam every episode. I'm sorry, but this is this was something I I I I do think is at least worth talking about. Do you guys remember in Super Bowl 50 when they made up that Cam Newton didn't shake Peyton's hand after the game? I don't remember that particular. I don't know if you remember this. I don't don't remember There was a narrative that like, there was a narrative that it's like, oh, he just walked. He didn't even shake Peyton's hand. It just like wasn't true. I just like made it up for no reason. I don't know. We don't need to talk about Cam Newton. I'm sorry. Race is, it's my fault. I should, do it should, race, race. should we push a narrative that Joe Burrow didn't <laughs> shake someone's hand? Hey, racism <laughs> does exist in the NFL and the dialogue heavily. It does, especially yeah. at the quarterback position. And it, the double standard, I think, was clear. And you saw it a little bit at the halftime show with like every conservative like media outlet being like, oh my God, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. When it was literally just like <laughs> at the good halftime show. The Snoop Dogg. Like... <laughs> People, but people cry about the halftime show every year, dude. Oh my god, who cares? I thought it was a cool halftime. I don't show. care about that. I, I enjoyed yeah, the I thought it, first this off, is, I thought is, it was good. This Second was off, my it's favorite not, halftime show, maybe ever. First of all, I think this one got received I, like, well, and it should have. Besides, like the obvious people who are going to complain about rap being the halftime show. Yeah. I thought Kendrick, especially. I was in a bar, <laughs> so like the audio quality wasn't like super great. But like, as far as like the visuals go, I thought like Kendrick Lamar was absolutely in his bag, and I thought Snoop and, and Dr. Dre just like really brought the house down. I I couldn't really hear Fifty Cent <laughs> coming out upside down. That was. <laughs> I guess that's a reference to a music know. video that I have not, I, full disclosure, I have not seen the YouTube, the, I was like, why are they bringing him upside down? And I guess that's his whole, uh, I was impressed with his core strength to be, you know, just up there, you know? Yeah. yeah. Good stuff hey, from 50 yeah. cent there. Um, I couldn't really hear his performance super well, but I honestly thought the halftime show did a really, was, was really strong this year. And I usually enjoy the halftime show a decent amount. So yeah, but yeah, it does yeah. seem like every year we're the the initial reaction afterwards is like that was kind of mid, and I saw a little bit of that. But anyway, no, I, I really enjoy. It. Usually, I'm not a big fan of the halftime shows. Usually, I don't pay attention to it. But I was like, that was that was really good. That's because I, you that listen was to highly enjoyable. That's because you listen to sports without the audio and listen to your own music instead of the announcers. I was at a party, so or, no, I I did I did have the. I, I did have the audio on because I was at a party. I didn't have a choice. Oh, can I say so, something about before? This is not having to do with the Super Bowl. Can I can I, can I talk about my okay. time at the, yeah. the PGA Tour? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah go for it. You, you went <laughs> to watch golf. I did go to watch golf. And it was, it was awesome because, look, I guess the Arizona PG, the Arizona, the Phoenix Open is like a special one. Because usually when you watch a golf tournament, everyone has to like be polite and like softly clap and you can't yell. But in Arizona, I guess that's completely out the window because they have like stadium seating around this whole whole 16 specifically. And everyone is just going nuts in there. And like there was a hole in one and everyone was just going absolutely bananas and like throwing shit everywhere and then we snuck people, in people go bananas for a hole in one not all like the time. no they don't the, you, have you ever watched a golf tournament ever in your life I, i've been to golf tournaments i i grew up playing golf oh okay well then <laughs> <laughs> look at me i be, played golf for like 12 years <laughs> look at me being dumb. okay they go nuts for hole in ones but this hole is like apparently very different in that like it's the, like the 16th hole, like they'll throw beer cans and like this guy was like shirt, like the golfer like took off his shirt and is like running around. That is atypical, is it not? Okay, that does that doesn't happen. Okay, yes. <laughs> that does not happen. But like everyone is drunk and like booing and like cheering and we snuck into the VIP <laughs> section with unlimited food and drinks. So like I was just there. Did you sneak into the- there was a hole in the, in the, <laughs> there was like a hole in the the screen that like let you in. So we just went through the hole in the screen, but that was a very good way to pregame a Super Bowl. <laughs> Any, cause next year 
the, uh, the Super Bowl's in Phoenix and the Arizona, the Waste Management Open will also be in Phoenix. So if uh, anyone's here for the Super Bowl next year, I would highly recommend pre-gaming it at the Phoenix Open. That is all I want to say. Uh, I, I enjoyed the golf tournament. The first one I've ever been to. Matt, but I'm sorry for assuming that you haven't. But uh, yeah, I, I, <laughs> it's I, fair. I enjoyed it's this fair. one. I, I, I guess I don't look like an avid golfer. I haven't golfed. Well, and you while, hate it. You're like, oh my god, I, I hate be. golf. Theo, no, why I love you golf. The, well, you're like, I, I cannot believe Theo's at a golf tournament for Super because Bowl. Because it's Sunday. the Super Bowl. It was it's f- Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> it was like seven hours. That's before what you're supposed I was confused. to do. I love golf. Oh, okay. but I was just so confused as to why you were at a golf tournament on Super Bowl Sunday. It was like seven hours before the game. Yeah. <laughs> what else am I supposed to do? Just watch the okay. pregame. <laughs> yes. Watch the entire playoff run for do both your teams. own pregame, man. Do your do do your own pregame. I guess I could have, yeah. True, I did do kind of do my. I and mean, you already did one type of pregame, yeah, so yeah. could have done another. Well, I think that pretty much wraps things up for us. As always, tons and tons of content coming to win all platforms. We'll be back Friday to preview NBA All Star Weekend. We're going to get into some more basketball stuff now that the football season is over. It is very, very sad. Don't miss out on all the great content coming away on all platforms. As always, from Corn Boy, Bird Boy, and Lemon Boy, we'll catch you on the flippity-flop. Flop.